This is a 1977 Porsche 911 Targa, originally powered by a gasoline engine, and by the end of this series, it will run entirely on electricity. Specifically, we're gonna get the battery boxes kind of complete to the point where we can get the motor to spin. This one was completely stripped down and we're now building it back up. We've done previous episodes on this one about the suspension, batteries, things like that. So if you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link to those videos up here. The motor spinning is a really big milestone and I'm excited to show you all the things we've done. Let's get to it. All right, we've got the motor here. It is going to be going into the Porsche. We've done a lot of the test fits and things, so this should be pretty straightforward, but you never know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, we are going to install axles in the Porsche again, or we're going to retry. Last time we ran into an issue with the axle stubs in the vehicle not being the right size as the axles that the customer wanted to use. We've got these axle stub adapters for the motor. Obviously we need those. Adapts it to uh, a 911 SC, I guess, which are just the thicker axles and they've got a wider diameter axle stub mating hole pattern. So this is a 108 millimeter. What was in the car was a 100 millimeter. Also these, the axles are an M10 and the ones that are in the vehicle were an M8 bolt. They're just a little bit smaller, obviously eight millimeters smaller, and then the bolt holes are smaller as well. So when we went to install it, obviously it didn't fit. <laughs> We're gonna get the, the new axle stubs in the car, make sure they clear. All the dimensions here are the same. Uh, we just gotta make sure it clears the trailing arm and everything like that. Okay, so we got the axle stubs in the car. Um, obviously we got really tight clearance around here but these trailing arms and hubs are the same throughout the years, even the years that these were used on. But it's nothing that Porsche hasn't done. But yeah, I'm really happy with that. And it matches the size and everything of the axles. So now we just gotta get these axle stubs replaced in the motor with our new ones, and then we'll get the axles in. Axles are in, We've got a nice down slope here at full droop. Got all six of these bolts torqued to 60 foot pounds and these four bolts torqued to 60 foot pounds. Everything spins nicely, smooth, same thing on this side. And then also got the axle stub nut torqued to 250 foot pounds on both sides. So that means, nice glove here that's sealing off the coolant port. That means that our drivetrain is good to go. All the suspension, axles, brakes, literally everything. We are good to drive this once we can get some power to the motor. All right, the welds are all done. Everything that I can get to just basically, I mean, kind of stitch welding, but this whole side is welded. This whole side's welded. This whole side's welded. So super strong. I mean, this is thicker than this. It really ties the bottom body of the car together, especially through the battery box. It's almost like a cross member. So the front of this is now extremely strong, especially with like, you know, the the new improved uh, suspension cross member and stuff like that. So this is, um, <laughs> this is gonna be crazy strong now. It should stiffen up the vehicle really well. I'm going to remove these bolts, take the battery box back out and do the welding on the top side. All right, up next, uh, we're in the front compartment for the battery box that's going in here. Uh, we need to weld in some little patch plates. We're just left with some little open areas and here. So we're gonna weld in some plates like this, in this hole, this plate, in that hole, and this plate in that hole. Yeah, we're gonna get it all in place, tacked in place, and then we can weld it all up.
Got the uh, patches welded in here uh, all the way around. Got a little bit more support on the corner for the battery. Got all of these welded in. Got a lot more welds on this one. Got this one all welded in. For today's sponsor, we have Gulu. This is electric air duster. Got a nice charging cable. So it comes with a couple different nozzles to get into the spaces that you might need. So it's got like a little flat guy, kind of an extended reach. So again, this, this allows you to get to all the places you would need. It's got a pretty decent battery. I think this is cool. I think this would be a great idea, even a Christmas gift or a gift for any guy. Oh my goodness. I was not expecting that. That is cool. So that's what you do, just pull the trigger. It gives you three lights to tell you how your battery's doing. That is incredible. I cannot believe how much force that's got. Well, I wish I could describe it to you, but man, that is like powerful. That is pretty cool. All right, so I just had to show the guys in the shop because I actually was kind of blown away about how much force this is. It's kind of like, it's like a portable air hose. It's not like just, I don't know, I was thinking like hair dryer or something, but this is like got force. It's like, I have to find something to show you. This is the Gulu electric air duster. It uses a strong motor that blows air fast. That means it can blast away dust, crumbs, pet hair, or dirt from keyboards, car seats, vents, corners, and even tricky spots you can't reach by hand. It's cordless and rechargeable, and just charge it up and you're ready whenever you need it. It's small and light, so it's easy to carry and use anywhere. And because the airflow is strong, you get powerful cleaning without lifting heavy machines. One tool many uses, dust, clean, and refresh your space fast with the Gulu F3 electric air duster. You can use something like this. It's very inexpensive. I'll leave a link in the video description below. Today we're gonna to be building some mounts, not for motors, but for batteries. These are all the fixtures and things we need for the Porsche. So here we've got a couple plates all cut out, ready to weld. So this is gonna go on the Porsche. All right, it's time to work on the Porsche rear battery. Got the battery box here. There's no batteries in it right now. We'll just make it easier to work on. Got the Porsche battery box, tools we'll need, and the mounts left side and right side, and then hardware. Hopefully get this uh, in place and do some welding, weld everything we need in place and uh, make sure that it can all be bolted in, taken out, installed. Um, yeah, so let's get to it. Let me show you what we got. These are the top mounts, got two bolts in place, and then that bolts to the original like transmission engine mount area. And then we'll weld in this flange here. We'll weld that, weld it to here. And then we got two bolts into the bottom of the box as well as this metal around the corner holding it in to the original engine mounts. Same thing on this side. And then on the front, these guys, they'll get welded to the cross member. And then we've got three bolts uh, around the corner on the bottom of the battery box. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's just start welding. I took the battery back out so I can finish welding it up. These are all finished, the rear mounts are. This weld done and this weld done. We only have tacks on these. So we're gonna finish welding this up. This is the rear Porsche battery box. We're starting to get lights assembled. We got a seam sealer kind of around the seams there. Taking this nice and slow. I think we're gonna leave the side panels off for a while, but we're gonna put on the front one here. It's gonna take some of the components and things off so the panel can slide on. Yeah, it's looking good.
This is the Porsche battery box. These are all used batteries and uh, they're all kind of all over the place as far as voltage. So got this charging things up so that they'll all be the same. And we were just balancing cells. These cells, I'll call this group one module was kind of high, like a 3.7. I shouldn't say high, but it was a 3.7. This one was like a 3.4. And so basically we're just uh, going through monitoring all the cells as we charge them. We were just charging up the last cells. Everything's pretty well balanced. So we've got one more just to juice up a little bit. We've actually been using a light bulb to kind of bring any of these down that are a little high. This one's just about ready to button up. All right, this one is all done. We've got all the bus bars on. We've done uh, some cable management where we've just kind of got like some sticky guys with some cloth tape and zip ties. Basically, we, you know, if you go over bumps and stuff, you just don't want cables um, to be able to rub around. We're doing a couple things on the battery management system just to program it while it's here to open. But uh, we'll go ahead and put the cover on and put this one in the Porsche. This is the Porsche battery box. It is all buttoned up. So we've got some lifting eyes and things so we can go put it in place. It is in. Probably keep these lifting eyes on for a while. This has all got to come back out when the car gets painted. But yeah, it's in. All right. So what we have here, so we've got three plugs and over a hundred chances to get it wrong. I will only need one chance. Am I a talking monkey? Jeremy's right. I am the face of electric supercar. So what I need is I need my paper. Okay, so this is J1, J2, KL15. Oh shit, I already did this wrong already. How do I get that pin out? I was supposed to put it on that one, pin three, and I did it on J1. Look at that, like a moron. <sighs> this is hey. all on you. Hey, I bet you it has to do with these. DC to DC contactor. Why is that labeled J33? I just populated J33. Because it says on there, it doesn't say what it goes to, it just says J34, which is positive contactor. We are here at the Porsche. We are powering up our motor controller for the first time. So we've got uh, ethernet settings and everything hooked up. So hopefully this guy will talk to it. So go ahead and uh, turn it on. Yeah, so available interfaces, that's good. So it's just showing the calibration differences. So I think this is all the stuff from my car and it's saying like, hey, here's what's on this controller. We do have our first signs of life. We are in limp mode. That's not necessarily good, but we expect that we don't have like the accelerated pedal plugged in. But look, we got heat sink temp, inverter temps. We are communicating, which is good. Stator temp. So yeah, we'll start uh, programming and debugging. Five warnings. Warnings. So we got battery now. We are in the process of updating the firmware. So we've got success for the latest firmware. So now we're gonna go ahead and reflash the motor. Now we are going to do the flash, the Tesla drive unit. Proceed. All right, so it says success. Great success. You go for it. So we're powering on after a flash.
So it says no. So we got all those warnings. So if you bring that to ground. Which one? Uh, D-I-N-L-1 or D-I-N-L-3. One's, one one's drive, one's reverse. I've got drive and I've got reverse. You ready for ground? No. Nope. Oh. Okay, so that's hooked up. So let's check to see if it's shifted gears. You got brake switch has got to be on. It's on. on. Oh, it's on. Okay. So I don't see it moving. We've got um, things talking to the motor. We reflashed it. We still have a pedal error. We think that's why we're not able to kind of get things moving. But uh, this is so much, do I say that? This is better. We like, how about that? We like it better because um, this controls contactors and it also checks to make sure that uh, things are done correctly. Like it will click contactors to make sure they're not stuck. It'll check uh, to make sure that the voltages are kind of leveling out appropriately before it'll close contactors. So I think once we get the pedal figured out, um, I think we can get this one spinning. Do you hear anything? Yeah? Oh, yeah. So we were able to get the motor to spin, but uh, after some trial and error with a Tesla Model S pedal. And with this car, we actually need kind of a floor mounted pedal. There's just not room for a Tesla pedal. So we've been working back and forth and now Tony's got this work in. I'm gonna do the throttle, just so you can see it, yeah. So basically he, he pushes it and we get some response there. So we're gonna try it now with the motor. So go ahead and, Jamie, hold something. You got it, he's gonna put it in gear. So now we're in drive. Okay, so give it, give it a little goose. So yeah, just like a little blip. There you go, okay. Sweet. Look, that's a good job. We got the motor spinning. That's a great milestone that gets us that much closer to getting this thing on the road. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. What is it you call it when you like take a dump and you get a little splash back? Poseidon's kiss. Who's Poseidon? He's the guy with the trident in the bottom of the ocean with Aquaman. That's fine. Well, Poseidon can kiss my ass next time I take a dump because he did last time too.